Joining me now on Telecom TV is Mike Galvin, who is Managing Director of Service Strategy and Operations with BT. Mike, thanks for talking to Telecom TV. We hear a lot at the moment about gigabit access. The word gigabit is a very popular marketing and, and buzz word to, to use. What's BT's strategy and approach to gigabit access? Well, it's a great soundbite. And first of all, we recognize that some customers now and more so in the future will require that type of access, which is why we go for a hybrid technology approach to give them that type of uh, flexibility of, of what they can actually consume. But um, you have to be careful about gigabit as a soundbite because um, it's a downstream speed. Now, as you get more into the future, you're going to have more interactive services. Upstream is going to become important as well. So gigabit isn't the whole story. Now, upstream and downstream isn't the whole story either because um, headline speed might be very interesting, but you've also got to look at throughput and latency, which are going to become more important, particularly as you get in the Internet of Things. So as a, as a technology war cry, it sounds great, but it's absolutely you've got to do a lot more than just gigabit. Which brings me on to GFAST technology. Tell me more about the work that BT's been doing on this broadband standard and how you've taken it out of the labs and into wide-scale trials. Well, if you want to know why GFAST is important, you've got to start with customers. You've got to look at what customers actually consume. Now, currently, customers consume, on average, you know, round about the mid-20s in terms of megabytes as a, a peak speed during the month. But if you look at growth, historical growth that we've actually seen, that's going to roughly deck triple in the next 10 years. So we're going to be looking at 220 megabits uh, as a, a, an average peak speed and maybe a median speed of around about 300 megabits. So we have need a technology that can actually provide that type of service to our customers. Now that's why GFAST, wow, what a technology. Right, so we looked at GFAST, we had it in the labs, it was initially advertised as something you stick on the top of a pole with a range of 75 meters, provide high speed, short range to customers. But we fiddled with it, you know, we fiddled with the, the, the technology, we fiddled with some of the parameters there, and we quickly worked out from even the very early chips, the, the, the hybrid chips that came out supporting the, the standard, that it would go much first, further. And indeed, we got it uh, initially out to 300 meters, and we think it can go out to 400 meters and beyond. Now, that makes it a really exciting mainstream technology to bring um, very high speed internet to customers. And if you think about it, if you've got a 500 megabit service on a 16 port unit on top of a, a, a pole or in a, in a footway cover providing service to customers, that's actually a more powerful uh, solution than aggregated, aggregated GPON. 2.5 gig fibre to the premises today, if you if you if you look at the actual average speeds available, and it shows you how these technologies can leapfrog each other. Now, it's early days yet with GFAST. As you say, we're in a, a large-scale field trial. We've done a, a 2,000 home field trial in Huntingdon in Cambridgeshire and Gosforth in Newcastle. We've got a variety of manufacturers involved in that. We've got a variety of configurations. We're going to test it to death. Right, to actually make sure it really is living up to its name. Now we're going to be doing that over the next few months, but um, already from the early uh, trials that we've got, it's performed very well and we're very excited about it. You mentioned that in the decade to come, we're going to see an increase in speed demand from consumers. Why is that? What's going to be powering and generating the need for this increased broadband capacity? Right, so Let's take now 2015 and wind back 10 years. You, and let's pretend you asked me that question in 2005. And my answer then would be exactly the same then as it is now, which is, I haven't got a clue. But if you want to know, go and ask a class of 12-year-old children. Right? Because that is where the future is, and these are the future consumers of this technology. Right? You know, We couldn't imagine what, for example, Facebook would be delivering, what Tweet would be delivering, the Internet of Things was just a, a really wacky concept in those days. And you look how much things have changed in 10 years. They're going to change even faster in the next 10 years. And already we're seeing applications like ultra-high-definition de uh, ultra TV come along, right? and we're, we're trying to um, assimilate to actually how much bandwidth that will actually take. But entertainment will be a whole new experience and a very interactive experience. And people will have all sorts of connectivity to the Internet of Things. 
you know, the idea where you wear a, a, an internet watch today will have developed to actually where you, you, you've got body wearable technology that recalls all sorts of aspects of your daily life. So I think it's very difficult to predict exactly what's going to be there using that bandwidth. But um, the potential is there to do it. And we've got up and coming generations that are using this technology more and more in every aspect of their daily life. So how future proof is GFAST technology? Are you expecting it to last a decade, a couple of decades before you then got to revisit the installed copper plant? I think we've been at that position several times in the past. You think about with dial up, right? When we moved to broadband, that was a, a complete rethink. That was a step change. Um, if you find an engineer that tells you something is future-proof, get another engineer, right? There's no such thing. Um, but what we have tried to do with the technology, remember it's not just GFAST, it's a combination of GFAST, fibre to the premises as well, and fibre on demand, if you like. Um, uh, and that composite solution, and together with technical developments in fibre as well as radio over copper, uh, built into the future. So what we've built in is enough technical flexibility to cope with a number of changes, both in terms of the bandwidth people use it, and it's easy to think about um, future requirements in terms of bandwidth, but it's not just about the, the sheer oomph of the bandwidth, it's about network capacity, it's about throughput, it's about latency, right? all of which will affect customer experience in the future. And we've picked technologies that actually um, are capable of much more flexible response to these particular challenges. So with G.Fast, for example, the closer you locate to the customer, the higher speeds that you'll get, the lower latency you'll get. With um, uh, some of the PON technologies, you can put, you can stack one PON on top of the other. So we've built into that level of flexibility. Now, I can't guarantee you it's future-proof, but it is a lot more flexible and potentially has a lot further to run than many of the technologies that we've used before it. Is BT looking to push fibre out to distribution points, to more distributed nodes? Well, yes, absolutely, and we're doing some trials in that area. So, first of all, GFAST is taking fibre out from the exchange to a node. Now, it could be a cabinet, it could be um, a box on a pole top or a box in a footway box. The flexibility is there to do all of those things, and you could have a cabinet with uh, daughter boxes off it, you know, to actually extend range or increase speed. Um, but also the te technology is marching along here very fast and the, uh, the, the modern local network has got to do a lot of heavy lifting to support a number of services. Uh, for example, mobile companies are under severe pressure on air, the airwave data rates they can actually support. Even with new technologies like 4G and 5G coming up, um, they'll probably still lag significantly behind what fixed line can actually achieve. Um, in order to get higher densities, they need to move their masts closer together and have smaller cells, right? and therefore moving away from the big cell sites with the big antennas is, is probably a, a trend we'll see going to smaller cell sites, actually uh, a few hundred metres apart. Now, you'll need this type of technology, this type of fixed access technology, to support that type of mobile uh, requirement. You'll also see, for example, the humble router in your home become a truly technological master right it will uh, not only route your internet for you it will also handle your mobile calls and actually probably handle a number of other functions around your home regarding the internet of things and management of other devices so that gateway route is going to become a crucial element and also developing actually how you get your coverage and how customers connect to their networks ultimately what customers want is they don't want to bother about which network they're connecting to when and why, you know, why does my wife want to understand what a megabit is, right? I might want to understand it, she definitely doesn't, right? So what you need is you need something that's completely seamless that you can hop from network to network in the future so you're always connected. Now you mentioned the home router. Only a week or so ago, Google announced this OnHub device which is really more of a home IoT gateway supporting a lot of IoT protocols and communication standards. Do you think that telco st can still play an important role in connecting the home, creating the smart home, or is it going to be left to the likes of Google? Um, so first of all, I don't think that's true. I think if you look at the capabilities, the routers that, for example, BT Consumer has launched, they are very sophisticated devices. Um, you'll also see routers coming on that can actually support mobile cells, um, advanced Wi-Fi functions, Right, and multi-device connectivity. 
Um, Google, uh, I think, has, has badged some of this up, but they are not the first. And many telcos are actually ahead of them in actually this type of technology. BT has excellent offerings here and actually provides an excellent high quality router as standard. I think that's going to be set the standard for many other uh, communication providers to try and catch up with. Um, the gateway will be incredibly important to BT, it's an important part of our strategy. Um, it's uh, the, the gateway to a multiplicity of services and that can only grow in the future. We would first to recognise that. The broadband industry meets up in October in London at the Broadband World Forum event. What do you think are going to be the main talking points? What is the industry going to be discussing and debating at the show? So I think what BT is doing is already a major talking point in terms of G.Fast and the new technologies we're actually bringing on. Um, and I think that will feed into a wider discussion about how much bandwidth will we need in the future, where do we get it from, and we live in an industry which has got bandwidth inflation but price deflation. So you can't just keep on charging more for more bandwidth. You've got to find a way to actually do this at the same price points you're actually selling the current bandwidth for, or even cheaper if you can. That will be a major talking point. I think one of the other major talking points would be internet security, right? because you see that um, issues like identity theft are now uh, prevalent on the internet, and there are many issues about how, actually how do you protect your internet services. I think another major theme that will come out will be the Internet of Things. It's becoming a reality. You can see car manufacturers getting involved in producing uh, real-world examples. So, for example, on my phone, I can find out where my car is and I can tell you whether it's locked or not, which arguably is useful, maybe. Um, but you, what you'll see is an increasing number of devices in the home or the office or the school where everything actually is connected and that we have huge amounts of data on virtually every aspect of our daily lives. And that's a huge issue for the people who build and design networks. We've got to have architectures that are even more flexible in the future to be able to support the transmission of this data and the, the way it's actually shared. We need protocols that, is, that guarantee the data is shared with the people we want to and not shared with the people we don't want to share. We have those levels of protection built in. And finally, it's all got to be done to a cost. And th this is crucial. This is part of the success of the internet. It's been made accessible not to millions, but billions of people right, at an acceptable cost. Mike Galvin, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.